Welcome to the Success in Medicine podcast. I'm Dr. Rajini Kata, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Samir Desai. And today we wanted to discuss the anesthesiology clerkship. Uh, Samir, let me start with a basic question. Why is the anesthesiology clerkship considered important? Well, it's important for several uh, different reasons. First of all, uh, many students have limited exposure to anesthesiology until they do their rotation or clerkship. So it's a way for students to make an informed decision about anesthesiology as a career. And then for those students who um, want to pursue the specialty as a career, the performance in the anesthesia clerkship is particularly important. And I want to relate to you just the results of a study. This was an NRMP survey of over 50 anesthesiology residency programs. And uh, from that study, 84% of program directors indicated that the letter of recommendation from an anesthesiologist was a very important factor in making interview decisions. Well, given the importance of the letter of recommendation, then it's obviously very important to to make the right impression on your attending during the clerkship. Uh, so why don't we move on to that? How can you make a powerful impression on your anesthesiology attending? Well, as, as with uh, every rotation, it's all about your preparation. And in anesthesia, your preparation really begins the day before. And what you want to do is you want to be linked with an attending uh, and or a resident because if you can be linked with uh, one or both of these members of your team, then you can know in advance what the cases are for the next day. So anesthesia cases are assigned one day in advance. And once you find out what the cases are, then that can guide your prep work. And what type of prep work, excuse me, what type of prep work would you recommend? Well, the prep work uh, would start with uh, determining if the patient is in the hospital or not. So if it's a hospitalized patient, then what you can do is you can obviously review the medical record and get yourself up to speed on the patient and their medical history, the reason for the hospitalization, the indications for surgery. And what you can do is after you review all of that, you can introduce yourself to the patient and basically say, hi, I'm John, I'm medical student member of the anesthetic team, and uh, I just wanted to introduce myself. And, and what you can then proceed to do is you can do an anesthetic preoperative evaluation. And if you can do that the day before the surgery, then that will allow you to go home and make the most of your time at home to prep for the next day. And what sort of uh, things would you do at home? So at home, you can read more in-depth about your patient's problems. And uh, specifically, you can do that with an anesthetic bet. So what are the anesthetic considerations as it relates to that particular surgery and the patient's medical problems? And if you can uh, go through all of that and, and, and read extensively about those issues, then that's going to help you make the most of your learning opportunities during the case on the following day. And of course, when you're working with your attending anesthesiologist or resident, you can expect that they'll have some questions for you and your advanced prep will allow you to um, really, really shine and also allow you to ask some very, very good questions. I think that's great advice, you know, just being prepared for what types of questions might be sent your way. And I'll also add that you may not be able to always visit the patient in the hospital depending on the particular rules of your anesthesiology rotation, whether that's something that the attending would uh, would uh, perceive as a good thing or not. But regardless of whether or not you're able to actually visit with the patient, you can certainly prepare at home by reading about the particular procedure that's planned and the particular medical problems. And what about the day of the surgery? Do you have any advice for students on that day? So on the day of surgery, it's very, very important to arrive early. And basically what you want to do is you want to know when you're attending a resident uh, will be arriving and then plan to be arrived, plan to arrive even earlier than that because there's a lot that you can do. And if you arrive early, what you can get done is that you can help set up the operating room. You can evaluate the patient prior to the case. If you weren't able to do that the day before or if it's an uh, ambulatory-type surgery, you can evaluate the patient 
while they're waiting to be taken to the OR. And then, of course, you can discuss your anesthetic plan with the attending uh, or the resident. And can we focus in a little bit more about the operating room um, in terms of what can be done before the surgery starts? Absolutely. So uh, every operating room has to be set up before the case, and uh, there's a checklist of items that need to be um, taken care of. And so if you arrive early, that's one of the uh, items on your to-do list is to help set up the operating room. So that involves a check of the anesthesia machine, a look at the monitors, the ventilator, the cart, and uh, that can be a difficult area for students because uh, there's a lot of anesthesia equipment and students are often unfamiliar with the equipment so it can all seem very, very intimidating at first. And so one of the best ways to get comfortable in this area is just by asking the attending or resident if you can help with the setup. And I think you had discussed this on our website about a particular resource that you recommend. Uh, can you mention that here? Absolutely. So. Uh, there have been some great videos that have been developed about what anesthesiologists do in terms of setting up the operating room. And um, there are several different videos available, but one in particular that I like is uh, one that was produced by the Department of Anesthesiology at the McGovern Medical School at the University of Texas, Houston. And uh, Dr. Naveen Vanga in this video does a great job of showing you exactly how to set up an OR. Oh, very good. And where is that present on the website? Uh, you can access that at, at YouTube, but we've linked to it on the successfulmatch.com. And if you go to our blog or if you go to our anesthesiology specialty page, you can access that uh, article and that link. Okay. And uh, you had discussed on the day of surgery about the anesthetic preoperative evaluation. Can you discuss that in a little bit more detail? Definitely. So uh, the anesthesiologist, uh, before they um, start the case, they uh, will do their pre-op evaluation. And uh, that can be an important part of your rotation as well. And uh, it's important to get up to speed with how that preoperative evaluation is done. And fortunately, there are a number of resources that are available to students that allow that. And uh, we've linked to those resources as well. Uh, on the successfulmatch.com, and that's something that students can do uh, well before the anesthesiology rotation begins. And if you become familiar with that evaluation, then you're really going to be viewed as a productive member of the team sooner rather than later. Let's move into the operating room itself. Do you have any advice for students in the operating room? What I would encourage students to do is to take initiative in the operating room. It's it's very very easy for students to take a passive role. But, but you don't want to be one of those students because uh, there's a lot that you can do. And, and that's one of the ways that you can make a uh, powerful impression on the people with whom you're working. And so your initiative can start as soon as the patient is brought to the operating room. So among the things that you can do is you can help transfer the patient to the table. You can place uh, the cuff, the blood pressure cuff on the patient, the pulse oximetry, EKG leads. And uh, there may be other things that you can do as well. Some of these things are, are more advanced, and, and before you go ahead and just do those on your own, you definitely want to talk to the attending to get permission. But they include things like uh, inserting IVs and hanging fluids, uh, drawing up medicines, uh, and, and, and even intubation. You, you can intubate during the anesthesiology rotation. Some rotations require you to intubate. Uh, even if they don't require you to intubate, uh, you can have opportunities to do that as long as you're assertive. And those are, I think, great options for what medical students can be allowed to do in certain settings. And just like you mentioned, for some of the more advanced tasks, of course, you definitely want to check with your attending first. Um, and that's something that could probably be done at the start of the rotation, that you could indicate that you would like to learn these additional skills and be involved as much as possible. And I was just going to add to what you said that you really need to learn how to work very carefully with the nurses in the operating room, even when you're doing smaller tasks, such as moving the stretcher out of the room or placing a blood pressure cuff. It's very important that you work very closely and in sync with the nurses and very respectfully as well, I would add, correct? 
Absolutely. So that's a vital skill for anesthesiologists. And if that's what you want to do with your life, um, you know, your anesthesiologist attending and resident will be looking very carefully to see how well you collaborate with everybody in the operating room. I think that uh, that's a great start to some advice for the anesthesiology rotation. There are several other points that I think I would like to ask you about. So in our next episode, we'll go over more uh, advice for the anesthesiology clerkship. So thank you very much.